Hello and welcome to this Union Solidarity International weekly update. My name is Walton Pantland and with me is Andrew Brady. Now, there is a social crisis in Greece at the moment caused by austerity. Uh, this is important to us because we are seeing the example of what extreme austerity does to a society and the Greek people are essentially guinea pigs in what is an assault by neoliberalism on social democracy. And uh, if the Greek people are isolated, I think this is something that we can expect to see throughout the rest of Europe and already we're seeing similar patterns developing in other European countries, including Spain and Portugal, and, uh, and heading north. So it's something that we're all likely to face unless we're able to um, build some kind of resistance to it. And we can see what happens, and it's not good at all. Um, Paul Mason, who's the BBC Newsnight editor, spent some time in Greece recently and came back saying that it reminded him of the Weimar Republic, of the uh, the center collapsing and extremism growing and we're certainly seeing the rise of the Nazi Golden Dawn Party and it seems to us and from some of the people we've spoken to in Greece that in some instances the Greek state is essentially outsourcing oppression to the Golden Dawn who appear to have deeply infiltrated the Greek police uh, with as many as 60% of Greek police officers supporting the Golden Dawn and uh, we have reports of trade unionists, left-wingers, immigrants, women, uh, gay people, all being targeted and attacked by the Golden Dawn, in some instances then being arrested and being beaten up in the police cells as well by police officers who are Golden Dawn members or supporters. So we're seeing the kind of the terrible things that extreme austerity does to a society and how it gives, gives place to, to rising fascism. Uh, we also saw the case of uh, Greece has a problem with tax dodges, the same as the UK and a lot of other countries. And uh, there's a list of 2,059 people who may be dodging tax. They have Swiss bank accounts. That list was passed to the Greek government two years ago. They've not acted on it. And so a Greek journalist, Kostas Vaxivanis, decided to publish that list because where is Greece's wealth going? It appears to all be fleeing offshore. And uh, instead of targeting the people on the list and investigating them for possible tax evasion, the Greek state arrested the journalist who had exposed them. So um, we'd encourage anyone to sign the petition to have Kostas Vaxivanis uh, released and have all, all charges dropped against him. Um, then there is a little bit of good news coming out of Greece as well, and that is uh, last Sunday, the 29th of October, was Ochi Day. Now, this is the anniversary of the day the Greeks said no to fascism in 1940. The Italians essentially told the Greeks they would like to enter and occupy the country and Greeks said Ochi no and they resisted the Italians and fought uh, and pushed the Italians back. Mussolini had to go running to Hitler for help and it probably had a fairly big impact on the outcome of the war because it meant that Hitler's invasion of the Soviet Union was delayed and uh, his troops were caught in winter. So it was an important turning point in the war. In the celebration of Ochi Day, there were a number of anti-fascist demonstrations as well, explicit anti-fascist demonstrations where high school students wore anti-Nazi armbands and, and did a lot of other things to protest the rising fascism in, in Greek society. So uh, we're very pleased to see that there are people out there resisting the rising tide of fascism. Uh, also, on the theme of resistance, the 14th of November is General Strike Day in Greece, but also in Spain, Portugal, Malta and Cyprus. And across Europe has been called as a, a day of action, even for countries not going on general strike. There's also a fantastic video that we'd urge you to watch called Respirar, Breathe in Spanish. It's produced by the Spanish unions and its purpose is to, to tell people that the strike is their opportunity to breathe and to scream out their resistance to the austerity that's tearing their society apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an absolutely fantastic video and we would urge everybody who's watching this clip or listening to it to check it out. It's really an example of the power of social media to move and inspire people to take action. And as people who are watching this or listening will know, our solidarity with Greece campaign has been a central part of what USI has been trying to do over the last six months to try and show our solidarity with the people of Greece, with the trade unionists who are under attack and that's exactly what they are under, is under physical 
as well as an economic and social attack. And USI is trying to do all that we can to try and give a voice to our brothers and sisters in that country because, as has been reported in the UK media and elsewhere, the Greek media are very reluctant to touch on some of the issues, including the detention of 15 anti-fascist protesters who were locked up and a coroner said there is prima facie uh, evidence of abuse that happened. We also see the case of the infiltration of Golden Dawn as Walton's referred to within the police hitherto not been very widely reported in the Greek media and it's an opportunity for people who want to support our brothers and sisters in Greece to make sure that the the attack on democracy, the attack on the freedom of the press is exposed and we will continue to do anything that we can to ensure that workers' voices in Greece are heard to a wider audience if the Greek media aren't prepared to do it. And although Walton touched on some positive news coming from Greece, the situation is quite desperate. Mm -hmm. And let's not beat about the bush here, as we say in Glasgow. The situation is desperate. We see a health sector that is in crisis. People aren't able to pay for their medicines to help with cancer treatment. And people are dying as a result of this. We see the situation whereby Walton's referred to tax evasion, a very topical and important issue across the world, where 28 billion euros is estimated to go missing every year. Now, the Troika are asking for 13 billion of cuts when there's 28 billion pounds, 28 billion euros of tax evasion and they have the list to mm -hmm. investigate it. And that shows you the priorities of the government at the moment and a worsening economic situation. The austerity measures that are obviously designed, as we know, to try and bring down the deficit, if you believe that, you believe anything, are now projected to reach 192% of GDP by 2014. Not the 120% that the Troika's austerity measures were designed to do, which just shows you austerity does not work, it causes pain, and we're going to shout from the rooftops, the USI, and work with other organisations and sister trade unions across the world to challenge mm -hmm. this evil, and that's what it is, the evil mantra of austerity. Absolutely. Moving to Kenya, the leader of the Congress of Trade Unions of Ken Kenya, Francis Atwoli, has been fined 500,000 Kenyan shillings, which is about 3,000 pounds, for refusing to call off a strike in the Kenyan tea industry. Uh, he was defending jobs which were threatened by mechanization. Now, as an act of solidarity, the international trade union movement is trying to highlight this case and also to raise money to pay his bail. So we'd urge you to support that campaign as well and support the right of Kenyan tea workers to defend their jobs and defend the right to strike in Kenya. Staying in Africa, we recently had the good fortune to meet Mbire Charles Kude, who is General Secretary of the Farco Agricultural Workers Union in Cameroon, who is visiting the UK with Banana Link to talk about the links between banana plantations in Cameroon and supermarkets in, in Europe. And uh, Mr. Kude was able to tell us about the conditions faced by plantation workers in Cameroon uh, and also the work that his union does to improve the condition of workers. Some of the things that they are exposed to, one of the worst is uh, um, agrichemicals, -chemi pesticides, which are, are often sprayed while people are working because they don't want to slow down production, um, and how consumer groups in Europe can put pressure on, on supermarkets and on the supply chains in order to ensure that conditions are improved. So uh, we have a video interview with Mr. Kude on our website. We uh, encourage you to, to look at that and also to visit Banana Link and Make Fruit Fair to uh, voice your support for that campaign as well. Mm -hmm. Just on international campaigns, there's a, a number of other campaigns that we would like to draw your attention to particularly uh, f f with the IUF, the International of Food Union of Food Workers, Hotel A Workers, and we are sh featuring them on our social media streams, including most recently a hunger strike by Korean workers who are demonstrating against 
the, the lack of employment opportunities and precarious work that they are facing and we would encourage you to go into the, the, IU, uh, the IUF's media streams and to see some of the, the vital campaigns that they are promoting and encouraging people to get involved in. And of course the, the campaign High at Hearts mm -hmm. still continues and some excellent footage and once again promotional videos on YouTube in relation to that came campaign that we'd urge you to check out and share with other brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Just on the issue that has happened recently of redundancy of Ford workers yeah. in the UK, this is a very important case, I believe, USI believes, in relation to what is a manufacturing policy for our country. But as we have been featuring over the last couple of months, the deteriorating situation for car manufacturing and the threats by companies such as Ford, as is what's happened in the UK with 1,700 workers going to lose their job and the thousands more down the supply chain. But this is happening across Europe in particular. We see GM and other motor companies in Southern America also threatening to withdraw mm -hmm. investment in order to cut jobs and this is a situation that we are going to be monitoring. We hope to work with our partners and official supporters, the CNM CUT in Brazil, who have got a strong interest in this industry and how we can have a programme of work involving car manufacturing workers across Europe and Southern America to talk about their experience and what they can do to fight for investment and to mm -hmm. fight for jobs. And I think mm -hmm. that's a very important issue that's happened in the UK. We would encourage anybody, wherever you are in the world, to check out the, the unions involved in that issue, the GMB, and unite to show your support for the workforce and how we can protect manufacturing jobs in whatever country, but in importantly to invest in this very important sector instead of the cutbacks and the austere measures that not mm. only governments but companies are actually introducing so we would encourage you to check that out also. Mm -hmm. And uh, we watch with interest the election results in the US. Uh, America is going to the polls very soon and um, it's clear that Mitt Romney is no friend of the workers and that things will get a lot worse for working Americans if he wins. you have thoughts on the American election? And it's a, as everybody's been mesmerised by what's going on in the American election, but we would also want to send out our best wishes to our thousands of supporters and followers in America who have been affected by Hurricane Sandy and the brave rescue and emergency workers who put their, put their own lives in danger to help other people. Uh, it's a, a very important example of the, the work that union members but also workers do in terms of trying to make people safe and to make sure that them and their families are, are okay and our best wishes are, mm -hmm. are with people affected by that awful hurricane, including some close comrades who have been communicating with us. But in relation to the election, it's absolutely fas fascinating. Everybody's mesmerised by w what's going on. And what is clear, whatever your views on President Obama are, that Mitt Romney would be an absolute disaster for working families and union members in particular. And in a very close race, it looks as if it's going to be defined by maybe one or two states, those being Ohio and in Florida, and what all the commentators, the independent commentators, not the Fox News of this world, but the independent commentators seem to say that it's going to come down to turnout, turnout within the states, who can mobilise their base, and from the reports that have been happening, it seems that Obama does have the advantage in being able to fire up his base and to get a turnout. So it's a very interesting and fascinating election, which of course does have ramifications mm -hmm. for the rest of the world. Let's not uh, lie about that. And that we await with interest the result next Wednesday morning after mm -hmm. it comes through. So uh, we've been doing all we can to highlight some of the the issues that are affecting workers, such as in not only the presidential elections, but of course we have states that on their ballots they're going to be having a look at voting on collective bargaining rights, and this is a, mm -hmm. an issue which the 
the economic uh, right within America have been trying to get on the ballots to undermine the power of collective bargaining. So this just isn't about the presidential election. This is about mm -hmm. the ability of workers within states to maintain a collective bargaining position mm -hmm. in order to try and maintain what little they have and the, the threats by the economic and political right to further undermine trade unionism within the United States of America. So we would ask you to check out some of the important battles that are happening within states and not just about the presidential mm -hmm. elections. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Hurricane Sandy shows the importance of having a state level response to disaster because uh, I believe Romney's plan was to privatise FEMA which uh, probably would not have worked because you don't get rescued unless you've paid for it. Uh, thank you, that's all we have time for this week and uh, please continue to watch our videos and listen to our podcasts.